Hello and welcome, this is Philip. Welcome back to part two of Design Review, where we are going to be reviewing designs of Dark Souls 1 enemies. So we're just gonna be continuing where we left off. So let's do this. We have here an enemy called Blow Dart Sniper. Let me tell you a little something about this enemy. For those of you who are not completely familiar with Dark Souls 1, it's not for those who already know this game and already speed running, doing no hit challenge, reverse mirror mode, upside down challenges. I'm not talking about you guys. You already know how annoying this guy is. As a first timer where you can get lost pretty easily in Blight Town, you're getting lost. You don't know where you're walking. Suddenly you get hit by something like in your neck and then you get instantly toxic. Toxic means it's like an extra level version of poison and your health instead of going down very slowly it goes down fucking fast so in summary you're getting lost and suddenly <laughs> toxic you fucking panic and then you die it's like the art director told the artist okay can you make the most most annoying possible enemy in this area and then the artist went okay i got you bro got you and then they came out with something like this i like though that he's covered up with planks and wooden fences stuck to his body as a sort of wooden armor like his face and everything is completely obstructed makes him kind of an interesting character but getting toxic where you don't know where you're walking that's oh my god dude we have here parasitic wall hugger i don't know much about this enemy he does look like an actual parasite which is cool but just in a bigger form just make creepy things bigger and then you you have an enemy that's pretty cool what I can say, there are some conspiracy theories about the shape of the parasitic wall correlating with the shape of Xanthus King Jeremiah of the Painted World, as you can see here. Very coincidence much. Let's uh, move on. We have here Crag Spider. Now it is said that hollows are transformed into these beings. The only thing I can say is that these creatures look sad. Like many other enemies and creatures in this world, they look sad. They, they just look like they weren't supposed to exist. Like it has arachnid features, it has also other insect-like features, but it looks more like a mutated mass that is like dying in pain and it's sad to look at. It looks pretty cool. It's a cool design. I, I like creatures that look weird and have an unnecessary amount of appendages and limbs and I like that it looks like a mutation. I like this enemy. Pretty uh, cool, pretty cool design, I must say. Now, while we are still in Blytown, and we're speaking about the term annoying, this must be the epitome of annoying. If we're going to design an annoying enemy, what comes to mind? Of course, the most annoying thing you can think of is a mosquito. Like mosquitoes are the sole definition, the ethos, the philosophy of annoying. And that's what Blytown is all about, right? They shoot blood from their sacks, their blood sacks. It's hard to hit them because they fly away, they're arranged. Yeah, good design. It's everything what makes Blighton memorable. I hate it, but I also love it. We have here a giant leech. That's literally what its name is. There isn't really much to say about this enemy. It's just a giant leech. It's an enemy. What, do you want, what else do you want me to say? That's it. Moving on, now we're heading to New Londo Ruins. It's actually the spooky area of Dark Souls. And we have here the Ghost Male, which looks pretty cool. It's really creepy. It's everything what a ghost should look like. Weird movement, weird proportions. They can elongate their arms, stretch it out and use these knives. It's almost like scythe-like movements. They walk through walls when they're with a lot of ghosts at the same time. This, this place becomes really hard. Basically, New Londo was flooded. So all these civilians drowned. Everyone drowned, everyone died. What's left now of New Londo ruins are these ghosts. And I love how everything in this area is so creepy, man. What I like about these enemies is that they indicate that there are later stage enemies because you actually require transient curse to attack them, otherwise you can't hit them and they're just gonna fuck you up. Now we have 
ghost female. I think this is really fucking cool. Like, the developers are a genius. Like, so you walk up to her, uh, this ghost screams, which is already kind of creepy. And then she's holding like a undead demon demonic baby. The way she attacks is she shows her her baby and the baby shoots lightning. Okay. Let me let me repeat that phrase. She attacks by showing you her, her baby and the baby shoots lightning. Yeah. I fucking love this game, dude. We have here the wisps. Tell me this doesn't look like your worst paralysis demon you ever encountered. It's a floating head that looks like this and it follows you and attacks you and it looks like fucking this. Again, it's creepy and it's perfect for this area. It does have the same head as the hollow. I'm not a big fan of recycling enemies, but in this way it's kind of still kind of different because you're using it in a completely different way still. It still feels as a different enemy, which I like. So next one is the dark wraith. I think this enemy is fucking awesome. Just look at it. It's everything I like about Dark Souls. Edgy, skeleton armor, skeleton hooded enemy. It's fucking awesome. This is what I like to see. These kinds of designs, what inspires me. I think they look fucking cool and they look even better in Dark Souls 3. We have Mass of Souls. So this is basically like a massive slime accumulation of dead bodies. It's like a heaping mass of dead bodies with a huge face made of dead bodies and it's like slimy it's like decaying slime this is everything i want to see in a dark souls game monsters that are made out of other things especially monsters that are made out of dead bodies they vomit they summon these wisps these paralysis demon uh, wisps they uh, have an attack where they open their mouth and then a fucking spear comes out of their mouth Macabre and morbid things like these is what I live for, man. And that's why I love this area. Even though these ghosts will fuck me up any time of the day. Let's move on. This one is called Heavy Knight. Now, this is basically a dude in armor. It's an undead, okay, an undead dude in armor, to be fair. He's usually guarding a treasure. He's really big and intimidating in the first time you encounter him. So you're literally overcoming an obstacle before you're collecting the treasure that you found. Or you just run really quick, grab the treasure and run away. Scared, like a scared little boy. Next one, we have the giant. There's probably a huge lore about these giants that I don't know anything about. What I can say is that when you encounter them in Sans Fortress, oh my God, dude, these guys are hard working. They're carrying these huge bombs, putting in the holes, shoot these bombs at you. They miss you probably, but if you're too slow, they destroy you. And they're doing this the whole time, grabbing the huge bomb, putting in the hole. The weight of these bombs probably are like insane and they're hard workers, man. I just I like to imagine that these giants are just waiting the whole day for someone to pass by so they can just throw these bombs at you. And at the meantime, they have nothing to do because I, I don't assume that they're doing this the whole day for just n no reason. I like this area of Sun's Fortress, just avoiding these bombs. I like it. They're pretty much not worth attacking. They're just, they're like mini bosses. I think they look cool actually. As far as giants go, they look cool. Next one is Undead Prince Ricard. I like fighting NPCs like these because it really feels like a sword duel when you whenever you're fighting NPCs. Again, he probably has a huge lore that I know nothing about. Only thing I know is that he drops uh, Ricard's rapier, which is a pretty cool sword. It's fast, has the fencing fighting style that I like. Yeah, he's a cool character to fight. So uh, let's go to the next one. These guys are sentinels. You'll find them in Anerlando. What I like about them is that they have weird proportions, man. Maybe it's just me. In comparison to their bodies, their face, their heads look kind of tiny. And what I like about that is that it makes it look weird. Let me explain. I think going for an art direction where enemies don't look or feel like humans is a cool direction to go, especially when you're creating a surreal world like Dark Souls. Everything and the memories and the experience you have in this world is going to be distinctly th something you only encounter in this game. And it's everything what makes it memorable. 
I liked her wig proportions. I like them. The next one is uh, the painting guardian. Is there anyone in this world who says, I love these guys. These are my favorite enemies. Not in terms of the aesthetics, but when you encounter them in game. Is there anyone in this world who says, when I'm walking up these ledges in An Orlando and these painting guardians are shooting, these throwing knives or they're gonna slash at me and then I fall from these ledges and I have to walk all the way up there again. Is there anyone in this world who says, I love that? That's my favorite. There might be some weirdo out there. What I do love about how they look though, is that they have like a, a unique aesthetic of like, it almost feels like a mixture between some Middle Eastern, Arabic, assassin or rogue type of uh, clothing or outfit. I really like it. Moving on to the next one, we have the Silver Knight. It's a classic enemy. Anorlando is full of them. They have pretty cool armor, but what I love especially about them is that, again, when we're talking about things that don't really kind of feel human, just take a look at their walk cycle. They, they don't quite move human-like. They move kind of jagged and rigid. Their, their motor skills are kind of weird. These little subtle details create like a subconscious uncanny valley that makes this a surreal world, that makes this almost horror-esque fantasy world. A lot of things feel oddly familiar, but it's, it's not. It's like these little details, like these walk cycles, these weird walk cycles they have that makes this world as a whole unique. And I love it. So let's go to the next one. Ah, uh, yes, this one. This one is a Serpent Soldier. This design makes me furious because I wish I could have come up with such a cool design like this. This is basically a Serpent version of the Lizardman. Like, we all know the Lizardman. It's generic, it's played out, we all seen it. But this, a Serpent version with this huge Serpent snake-like head. Look at this cool machete-like blade. It looks fucking cool. And it makes me mad because I wish I could have come up with this idea myself. It makes me so fucking mad. You find them in Sun's Fortress, and if you're speedrunning Sun's Fortress, it, it makes it, it makes this whole area into a joke. In the first time, this Sun's Fortress is like, what is these? Wow. This crazy, wacky, booby trap level, similar to like older NES games. Wow, this is crazy. But once you know how to go fast and pass everything, all these axes and this and that, it's, it becomes a joke. But I do love these enemy designs. They're so cool, man. Jesus Christ. Okay, next one. We're getting into Duke's Archives territory. Crystal Soldier. I do not know why they look like this. There's probably, once again, Take a shot every time I say I don't know the lore about this enemy. I like this design because it almost looks like it's a plague. It's some kind of, they're like, it's like an affliction. They're infested with crystallized, like a crystallized disease, which makes this enemy the more cooler if I think about that. Now we have Crystal General. Already the outfit and the, the, the armor design of this character looks really interesting and cool already. Fill it up with tons of crystals, like this crystallized disease. It makes this character really cool to me. Imagine getting hit by a sword filled with crystals, getting bashed with the shield filled with crystals. That's awesome. Next one. We have an enemy called Pisaka. They're like octopus serpents. They are really cool looking. Like, especially in the art. It makes it even more bizarre. I thirst for the day the seas run red with humans. They're much more blue in game. Yeah, that's it. Next one. I love these enemies because these are basically huge clams. And when they're open their mouth, you can actually see that there's a ton of skulls inside. Perfect, man. Magnifique. Mwah. Like Dark Souls has a lot of more wacky cre creatures that you can find. And this really shows clam creatures with skulls inside they're eating multiple human beings i like how their legs are weird i don't know how this creature manages to walk but it does in the catacombs area we have the necromancer in this image it really looks like you caught him off guard oh whoa, what what's going on what's going on Th that's really like this the pose he's having right now 
The way he is casting this fireball looks like he is it's doing something wrong and you just caught him. Anyway, the next one is called Bone Tower, I believe. This image couldn't get more low res and this enemy couldn't be more low poly than this. This looks like a molten Reese's nut bar that fell into the litter box. But uh, if we go to this, it's cooler because there are worms that are made out of a mass of skeletons and they come out of the ground. But this is like, what the hell, dude? So next one is a skeleton beast. I'm gonna get ya, oh yes, because I have attacks that are really hard to telegraph. Oh yes, I'm gonna get ya, oh yes. That's it. There's nothing else to say about it. Next one is Pinwheel Servant, and I hate to say it, but this is actually just smaller pinwheel. Let's be honest, let's be real, let's just say what it is. It's smaller pinwheel. I already mentioned I don't like the recycling of enemies. You know what it would be a good time save? Is if we grabbed a really interesting boss that has a, a tragic backstory and lore and it, the lore is re really intricate and interesting and then just reuse it as a smaller enemy. And to add on top of that, let's just place a lot of them just right before Nito and give them a really annoying attack, like shooting these wide exploding balls and let's call it a day. But there, there's probably some people that are watching this and think, well, actually, there's a really good reason for that. This is what you don't know about Pinwheel and that's why they're uh, servants in the first place and that's why they're there and that's why they look the, exactly the same as the boss. There's no good reason to literally reuse the same model and uh, make it a smaller version enemy. So let's go to the next one. We have here Baby Skeleton. Oh, Baby Skeleton. It's so cute. Wrong. Think about the implications of the enemy. It's a baby skeleton. This is a dead baby. And it turned into a skeleton that has been raised by some dark magic. They're, they're no trouble. They just run cutely after you in, in masses. But think about the implications. It's no coincidence this game is called Dark Souls. You're stepping foot into a dark world. This is not for the weak-minded. This is not for the frail. This is not for, for those who are easily distraught. It's only for the bravest of warriors. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Now to come back to the topic that enemies in Dark Souls look sad and tragic and they don't look like they should have existed at all. Look sad and tragic. They don't look like they should have existed at all. This is a prime example of that. He's called the Egg Carrier. Like imagine being this guy and being infected with eggs and having to carry the eggs you can attack them and then out of these eggs comes this the vile maggot and actually they just look like hercules beetle larva if you look at this they basically look like this they're exactly the same like no these creatures exist you know these are real creatures only difference is these uh extended jaws that they have but other than that they look exactly the same but uh, yeah, imagine being this guy. Ooh. Let's go to the next one. Here we have what is called Bounding Demon. If you think about it, it actually just is the ass of the undead dragon. They're just filled in the um, in the Lost Isolith, in the lava area. They're just they're filled with these enemies. In the end of the day, they're just undead dragon's ass. Let's go to the next one. Demonic statue. I don't know how to feel about these guys. They look exactly the same as the Asylum Demon and the Fire Sage Demon. They're interesting in the area because they make the Fire Sage Demon look really important. They're okay. They're okay. They do look like they're screaming endlessly with their hands in their belly like, Oh! Oh! No, this is a uh, weird looking creature, isn't it? It's basically a walking shredder. I love these weird looking creatures, man. Especially in the in the area they're they're in. They have like these tube-like tentacles with suctions and some of them are arms with, with like claws in them. When they grab you, they just put them in the shredder mouth that is located in their head. Like all these googly eyes. It looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh uh, monster or something like that, man. I love it. The next one is called the Chaos Bug. I couldn't come up with a cooler name for just a measly little bug. It already looks pretty cool in the art. This looks like 
an odd world enemy. This looks like an enemy that seems harmless at first and it's gonna lure me to his mates and then completely viciously attack me in groups. If you didn't know anything about Dark Souls and if you didn't know anything about this enemy, and I would tell you this creature like, dude, watch out. When you see these creatures, watch out, man. These are the most dangerous, deadliest, vicious, craziest enemies you've ever seen in Dark Souls. Watch the fuck out. And if you never played before, you would believe me. Because look at this. Look at how this creature looks. However, they can't attack. They're little bugs. You kill them in one slice. They're just like small... They're literal bugs that you can squash. It's so sad. In the arms of the angel. Anyways, let's go to the next one. This one is called Bloathead. It looks more towards a demonic kind of aesthetic. What I really love about them is their pose. It's like these creatures are really asserting their dominance. If they're just standing about and you're not there, they're just normally like this. And once you come and walk up to them, they start like asserting their dominance. Like, yo, what's up, bro? Come at me, bro. They only do this when you walk up towards them. So, uh, I don't know. I like this, how they walk like this. It's really cool. We have Bloathead Sorcerer. I really love the weirdly long proportions, the skinniness of the body. The face has extra weirdness attached to the mouth area, which makes it more bizarre looking than it was already. I love it, man. We have the Chained Prisoner over here. And I don't know what to make of it. It's, a, it's an enemy completely covered in chains it's completely covered in chains and also it's been impaled by a large super large pike it has a chain with a ball attached to it that it uses as a weapon i don't know where its head starts i don't know what to make of this creature even i just know that it looks like it's in pain and it's it's uh, it looks tragic and sad so we have here the hum humanity phantoms they look kind of cute. They deal damage by just walking up to you. They just uh, walk up to you. Hey, hello, hello. Meanwhile, you're like, oh, you're dying. They're pretty interesting in this area, but as a, like objectively as an enemy design, uh, I don't know, I don't, don't think they're that interesting. Would I want to encounter this in real life though? No, I don't want that. If you see this in real life, you're in, you're in big fucking trouble, dude. That's all I can say. That was a long ass list of enemies, but to my knowledge, I have concluded everything in this video. I might have forgotten some, but you know, if you like this series of design review, leave me a comment, a like, destroy that like, backstab that like. Uh, let me know if you like it. If you have any suggestions, leave that in the comments down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really fucking appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.